if she gives up her pension to a dude that has no money and he dies, forget if he even dies, at some point, guys, he's going to have to be, he's going to have to retire, either forced out medically, whatever. Okay. Her money's gone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to go ahead and listen to a Dave Ramsey call that ran about two weeks ago. It's called, Should I Lie to the Government About This? Let's hit it. Brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Well, I, uh, I am a divorced man. I'm 69. I have a relationship with a widow who's 68. She's in another state. We're talking and uh, we like to get together, but I'm... Um, Trying to be a righteous, godly man, I don't want... The minute I hear righteous, godly man, all faith and confidence goes out the door. You know why? I, I, I know I didn't let him finish. Because, you see, in my book, if you're right, is it righteous and godly? You don't need to tell anybody. Okay? I don't need to tell you I'm a good person. I don't need to tell you that I work hard, yada, yada. Okay? All right. And I definitely don't need to tell you I'm righteous and godly. So the minute I hear I'm righteous and godly, my thought is, okay, what sin have you just committed? <laughs> All right. 69 widowed dating another person who's like 68 or so widowed. <laughs> I want to just live together. I want to get married. But if I get she wants to live together, he wants to get married. Okay. All right. And they're in their late 60s. Get married to her, then she will lose her pension from her deceased husband, which is quite substantial. So, uh, Oh, she got a pension from her late husband. And according to the caller quote, it is quite substantial. Well, um, a Benny, Karen, if you guys are still around. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't even know when you guys leave the chat either. So just, just so you know, all your information is anonymous on, on my end. Okay. But if you are still in the chat, and you know, there is a great big pension for you, all right? And you're in your late 60s. The caller wants to get married to her, but the caller, the guy caller is aware that there's a pension on the line, a big one. You know, family, I don't like to think negative, but you know what's already going through my head? Benny writes, no marriage, please. Karen writes, I'm still here. Thank you, girlfriend. So... In my head, I can tell you right now, I, I, I could end the call right here and tell you if I'm six, if I'm in my late 60s. All right. Actually, I don't even think it would matter what age. If I have a pension from a late spouse, the pension is substantial. Why would I give that up to get remarried, especially at that late uh, stage in my life? I mean, you know, I'm 57, okay? We, we know 60s is not old, not in my book, because I'm three years from it, okay? But it's the later stages of life, okay? That's the honest answer. It's the later stages of life where we're going to be happy, healthy, and all of that, all right, hopefully. Um, I, I know I would not marry you, and I can tell you that without listening to the call. My grandmother, Lord rest her soul in Utah, all right, um, had a pension from her late husband, okay? Um, who passed away before I was born. Um, she never remarried. And it would have been fine, even though if she had chosen to date, she could, but, you know, she is from Utah, <laughs> okay? Very Mormon, you know, that one love thing and all of that, right? So she never remarried. But, man, if some guy had come along in her life and said, hey, give up, you know, grandpa's pension to marry me, at that late stage, I'd be going, absolutely not. Karen writes, just be friends. Yes, this, when you get when you get to this late stage, as far as I'm concerned, you can play house. Play house all you want. That means, you know, live together and all of that stuff, you know, but you're not actually married. You have the right to play house after the age of 60. <laughs> Especially where there's a pension involved, okay? Okay. When And again, we're talking pensions from late spouses. If it's your own pension, like I'll have my own pension, my pension goes with me wherever I go and it goes to my spouse. Like I'll take less of a pension, monthly payment, okay? Because, you know, ideally I would like to remarry, okay? Um, and I would be willing to take less of a pension, which we're allowed as teachers, okay? At least in my plan, okay? You can have a smaller pension so that when you pass away, it goes to your spouse, you know, the, the pension payments continue. That's great. That's wonderful. 
But in this case, it sounds like she's going to lose it if she marries him. It, <laughs> this is an easy problem to solve. Not all that complicated stuff like we did just a minute ago in that last stream. Um, a Benny writes, sounds like they should be friends in separate homes, not worth it. Oh, that's a good point about the separate homes because some pensions, and I'm no legal expert here, and I'm certainly not a pensioner expert, but I have heard that depending upon some arrangements, if you live together, that's considered quasi marriage. I don't know how it works with a pension, but I do know in divorces, Okay, if somebody moves in with somebody else, depending upon how long they live together, whatnot, it can actually stop a uh, ex-spouse's alimony. I don't know how that works with pensions, but that's a darn good point. Um, home with lo home with love is in the house. <laughs> You're never late on this channel. You're always on time. Always, always. Here we go. Um, what I was thinking is just having. Uh having a church wedding, doing everything the same, except not filing for a state license. So I just wanted your thoughts on that. So he's saying, I guess, you know, have the ceremony, but not actually get married. He better be keep, he better not be trying something that um, tries to get to our pension. That That's where I'm going to have, that's where I'm going to have a problem. What is the nature of the pension? I'm confused why she loses it if she remarries. That sounds more like alimony it's than a, a pension. No, no, it's it's a, her 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 husband was a police officer for the state of New Jersey, which they have very very generous pensions, and so uh, it's between three and four thousand dollars a month, and she would lose that if she remarries. And what most people do in these situations is they just live together; they don't even think about it, but. I you gotta check on those state laws, though. Okay, don't, 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 don't follow the sheep. Can't do that. It's a deal breaker for me. I would, yeah. I would want to have some kind of ceremonies. I'm trying to be a righteous man. Yeah, I hear trying that. to do the right thing. Okay. Well, so far he doesn't sound too bad. Hopefully, he has his own pension. But uh, it's and this woman has have been through a lot. She's lost her mother, mm -hmm. her sister, and her husband within a span of three years, and you know, she's been insecure most life, most of her life and she's finally has financial security and so for me to come and say hey well you know we're gonna get married gonna what, what is your what is your net worth uh well i'm a chiropractor so i make uh about ninety thousand a year but he asked what your net worth was you're a chiropractor you make ninety thousand a year you're in your late 60s uh i what? get some social security too my net worth is uh not much. Uh, 20000 20, right now. I don't have anything saved. Yeah. In his late 60s, his net worth is 20000 Crap, that's what I will have paid on my Toyota Corolla hybrid just this year alone. That's what I'll be saving in cash each year, starting in 2025. 20000 is his whole net worth? Uh, Karen writes, sounds shady. Uh, Benny writes, I don't trust it. Yeah, I don't either. Um, Home with writes, Home with Love writes, he wants to tie, he, oh, oh, he wants to lie to their friends and family. Oh, people, we, we got shade. This is shady night. I need an umbrella. I can't use my shower cap. It ain't raining. I need my umbrella. This is all about the shady stuff. Wow. Lost everything a couple of years ago through divorce. Mm -hmm. He lost everything through a divorce. Oh, and I bet this woman's looking good now. She got three, four thousand dollars a year. I mean, excuse me, three, four thousand dollars a month coming in. If this guy is, I think he said he was 68, 69 years old, he's got twenty thousand dollars saved. He's a chiropractor, which means he's self-employed, which means he has saved nothing. <laughs> she would become his retirement plan and he's trying to sound godly well doesn't god say something about you know you, you you should be caring for yourself so that others don't have to take care of you to the best of your ability where'd all of his money go in 68 69 years he's got 20 guys he makes ninety thousand dollars a year he's got barely and he sounded like he wasn't even sure of that 
$20,000 saved. Where'd all the money go? And then he goes, well, I lost it all through a divorce. You know, when people say I lost it all and you're 68, 69, did you just get divorced yesterday? I, I mean, just curious, you know. Mm. Yep. Okay. And how long have you been seeing this lady? Uh, just, uh, we've been talking for several months. You're months into this, buddy? No. I, 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 no, I don't see a love match here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Have you met her? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what you said. Talk. Yeah. Make sure it's not an online romance scam, but he would be the one scamming. Sorry, I bumped my camera. Talking. I didn't know if you were talking on the phone or like long distance. No, I, yeah. I saw her. I saw her last year. I saw her. We met and we talked. And she's an old, uh, years ago, was a, was a girlfriend in high school. So mm -hmm. I know her from back then. I know all about her from back then. Okay. I bet he's courting her now. All right. Um, yeah. Well, it's a difficult one. I, I'm not, not going to argue with you there. Uh, I'm with you, though. There's no question I'm not living with yeah, Yes, uh, Benny. Months. He's known her for months. Now, they were friends in high school or at least old girlfriend, whatever. Okay. But again, I have to ask, where did all the money go? When people say they lost everything in divorce, when you say everything, you mean literally everything? Or you lost a lot and you could have rebuilt it, but you didn't. With someone I'm not married to, I can't do that as a person of faith. Okay, as a Christian, my book tells right. my I book tells me not to do that. So I don't right. I don't do what the things the book tells me not to do because they don't prosper me and they're not good for the people in my life and people around me and so forth. So I just try to, even though it doesn't make sense sometimes, I just do what the book says. And so I'm not doing that. It's not I'm, I'm not like a Pharisee. It just is. It just worked good for me. Yeah. You know? So. Uh, I'm a I'm a follower. Well, there's a lot of, of people that do. do. I kind of get lost sometimes when Dave goes on his religious thing. My my it has a hard time paying attention. <laughs> I am a divorced man. I'm 69. I, I I I'm a godly man. I'm whatever whatever it was he said. Okay. I have a relationship with a widow who's 68. She's in another state. She lives in, Jesus, she's not even in the same state. From home with rights, love, giving up her guaranteed income source for this man with a shady financial past as she ages is not a wise decision. No, it's not. And the fact that she lives in another state, it, it wouldn't matter. It would not matter. I don't even think she should, they, they, no, she, she needs to dump this guy. He hasn't been able to help himself, so he needs someone to help him. And I don't care if he, lean, he can lean on God and religion all he wants. I'm going to say no. This this is not doable. Talking and uh, we like to get together, but I'm trying to be a righteous, godly man. I don't want to. Did I did I just um, accident, folks? Did I just kill the whole thing? Oh wait, hold on. I think I found where the end was. Hold on. Hold on. I found it. There's nothing much you can do, and it's just kind of crazy to me because the state is actually promoting. You know, uh, a, a fornication lifestyle. It's okay. It's okay. People well, they they do they, oh, do they yeah, do with a lot of fine. things. I mean, they they do with. A lot. <laughs> did you guys hear that? <laughs> Benny, Karen, Home of Love. Did you guys hear that? The state promotes a fornication life lifestyle. <laughs> hey, that 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 wasn't on me, YouTube. Okay, that came from the call. All right. Uh, uh, Benny writes, uh, sorry about, I accidentally bumped the uh, mouse there. I keep forgetting I can use the uh, keyboard instead of the mouse. I can actually tap on my keyboard instead. I try to, I try to remember that. Um, let's see. Home, uh, let's see. No, uh, Benny writes, she may not even know he's scheming a relationship. And Karen Karen writes, I bet he's in debt. Well, Karen, I don't know when, I can't quite remember when you hopped on. He makes $90,000 a year. And he's only got $20,000 to his name. He's a chiropractor. So he's a self-employed chiropractor. Wow. A lot of things. You know, with the, they do with the tax code. You know. They do with a lot of other things. So that's not you that's know, not new. Yeah. That doesn't change your stance or my stance. We have to do our thing regardless of what the stupid state does. There's a lot of things that are legal that aren't right. So 
Um, right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If I'm doing this right in my eyes before I'm going to have to start. Okay. Then, then uh, Karen Rice, this guy is weird. Yes, he is. I mean, I'm, I'm just talking it through with you. You, 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 you yeah. You're more than welcome to do whatever you want to do. I, I'm not saying you're a bad guy. I'm just talking it through with you. If I'm in your shoes, I've got to work through the fact that I am intentionally deceiving the state. And is that okay? And I'll give you a, a parallel example in my life is that I hate so much so that just talking about it right now, my heart rate is changing. I hate the federal income tax. It is absolutely immoral, out of control, pitiful. The money that I send to the federal government makes me want to throw up every time I think about it. I hate it. But we are required to pay it. We all hate it. It's pitiful how bad they run this country. And I keep and they keep milking me even more. It's taking my money at the point of a gun. I hate it. But you know what? I pay a hundred percent to the penny that I owe. And I think most of us do. Uh, Benny, that was an excellent observation. Uh, Benny writes, I think Dave muted him as he should have. Yes, you are right, uh, Benny. Now that you mention it, yeah, Dave did mute him because he was just going right on over him. He was just talking right over him. I take every legal regulation and loophole they allow me to take, and I'm a student of it, and I hire people with expensive checks that are students of it so that I can give them as little as possible with a hundred percent of integrity. And you know what's sad? You know who pays the highest taxes? Middle class. Teachers, firefighters. Yeah, I, let me tell you, I get like no tax breaks, okay? Let me tell you, when you're single female teacher, okay, my, 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 t I, what is it that we, that they said we pay more than, who's that really rich billionaire? I can't think of his name. That that really rich guy who he said his secretary his secretary um, pays more in taxes. Yeah, Wayne Buffett. But I hate it. Did I mention that I hate it? Did I bring that up? And so you know, but it's it's not about them. It's about me. And and remember, this title is called "Should I Lie to the Government About This?" Of course, we're not really married. I doing the right thing. So if I'm in your shoes, I've got to get, I'm not going to accept your lawyer's answer. I'm going to get with this, get with these people. I'm going to talk to uh, the governor. Crap. Call the governor. Talk to him. Why do I think this woman, I think one of you guys may have said, said it in the chat. So I apologize. Okay. I can't remember who. Um, why do I think this woman may not even know that He's considering all of this. Somebody said the word scheming. I don't have time to review the chat. I apologize. But why do I think she doesn't even know this conversation is happening? Like she she doesn't know that Dave's called into the Ramsey show to basically see if we can, you know, scheme this through. Like this is almost I get the sense that this is the guy calling in. Because here's the bottom line. He, he darn near 70 years old. He's tired of cracking bones. He wants to rest his bones. <laughs> okay. And wouldn't that be convenient? If he was, here's the other thing. If he's really, really godly, this righteous, godly, moral man, this would be Im totally immoral. And that's kind of, I think, what Dave was saying. Okay. This would be a total immoral thing. You, you, you talk about, this is why people, when I said to you at the beginning, the minute somebody tells me they're righteous and godly, the first thing I think is, okay, what have you just send over? Because you don't have to advertise to people that you're righteous and godly. Okay, it's going to show in your actions, your words, your deeds. Okay, I mean, it's, it's, you don't have to tell people that. So when people are standing on a pedestal and they're claiming that, you know, yes, I must tell you that I am righteous and godly, the first thing I really think is, okay, well, you, you know, what what'd you do? I mean, talk to the whoever runs the, the police commission in the state of New Jersey and say, look, this guy died on the job. And you're denying his widow the right to move forward with her life with this. It's ridiculous. You're asking her to shack up at 69 years old like she's some kind of 19-year-old that can't keep their pants on. This is ridiculous. A guy who is 69 years old and only has $20,000 to his name after making $90,000 a year, I don't have a lot of faith that he's got the brain logistical skills 
to carry on with such a assignment as to go help change legislative laws. Call me wrong. I just don't have a lot of faith in him. I don't think anybody in the chat does either. Um, uh, Benny writes, um, exactly. She doesn't know it's his scam. Yeah. I, I don't think she knows that that's just that, that, that is the gut hunch of those of us in the chat. All right. Home with love writes. I agree. This guy is virtue signaling despite being a romance scammer. Yeah. He is a romance scammer. That that's a good way of putting it. But remember home with love. He's righteous and godly because he told us so. And and you guys need to you need to give us an exception on this. I'm gonna I'm gonna bust them. Yeah. I bet that guy was still talking even after Dave muted him. Good observation, of Benny. Excellent observation. <laughs> if I'm you, and I, I understand why they do it, by the way, but uh, to keep somebody from uh, keep the widows from being a target mm. later with them with the juicy pension. Oh, so he's saying that there's a reason that they um, put that law into effect is because they're afraid people will marry them strictly, you know, for the money. So by saying, Hey, you could lose it. That makes them go, Hey, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to marry you. In other words, if you're really in love with each other and you're at that age, okay. You, you, you can just be roommates. That, that actually makes sense if you think about it. But um, well, I'm, I'm not saying he's targeting her. At if all. she, if they- yes, we are. We're we're all saying that they can't say, it, but uh, Benny, home with love. I we can say it. Karen can say it. They get married. You know, he's he makes ninety thousand dollars. That would effectively replace her income as long yeah. as they're married. But it still puts her at a precarious yeah, it, situation. It just, I, it- the problem is if she gives up her pension to a dude that has no money, and he dies. Forget if he even dies. At some point, guys, he's going to have to be. He's going to have to retire, either forced out medically, whatever. Okay, her money's gone. To a, I mean, literally, like gone. So there's a huge financial risk. Not, not worth taking. It, it, I, she, she's not going to do that. She's just, she's been through hell, and she's. This money means a lot to her. Yeah. Oh, but he's going to romance. He's going to romance her as much as he possibly can. Mark my words. Um, and so I, I understand the predicament and I'm not, uh, unsympathetic to it, but you asked. And so I've got to tell you the way we answer questions on the show is what. All right, folks, we are done for tonight. Oh, a night of thieving and lying and scheming and scamming. All right. Literally quickly here. Oh, let's see. Karen writes. And I bet you, she has a nice life insurance policy. Oh my goodness. I didn't even thought of that. The life insurance policy. Yeah. Here's the bottom line. She, no, let's reverse it. He has everything to gain. And she has everything to lose. Good night, everyone. Have a beautiful evening.